Hello, my name is Alexandra Vasilieva. I'm a student of St. Petersburg State University of Film and Television and you're watching student questions. Do you remember your first steps in your industry? Uh, yeah, my first steps was probably when I was very young, like a couple of years old, when I was playing with cars, when I was doing like construction uh, things with uh, puzzle games and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So if you are really into creating something, and you need to have a tool to create something, and then you grow up, you just get better guns, better tools, you get better equipment. So, um, to be honest, in my everyday work, there's not so much difference than what I, was, what I used to do when I was a kid. So basically just playing with building blocks and trying to make something that works. Uh, in in uh, the grown-up world, these are uh, different uh, electronics, different programming languages, so you need to um, kind of make more serious things yeah, than, than when, when you was a kid. But basically, this is the essential driving force that is driving you towards an engineering profes profession, just to solve things, to make things work. Mm -hmm. Probably for something that you want to have, for some problems that you, that you need to resolve. Um, yeah, so uh, my, my first steps in, uh, in industry were, uh, I was a part of a team that was uh, developing a system for uh, intelligent retailing. So this, th these, these were smart shops, and we wanted that each uh, customer that uh, comes into the shop that approaches a product that is greeted with a video presentation that lights uh, are, uh, light up the product in front of him. If he picks up a product, then you get the details about the product, etc. So an interactive store experience. Mm -hmm. So we had hooked up cameras, sensors, uh, digital signage screens, etc., and created a unique experience for the for the retail consumers. Afterwards, I was I was happy to see that the core of the software that I was programming it was a controller for this store, basically a C software that was controlling uh, all these things together, all the devices, was actually used in a color kinetics project for the Empire State Building lineup. So uh, they they tuned uh, to uh, Christina Aguilera's song. Uh, lighting up the Empire State Building using this controller. And this is really a powerful feeling uh, to, to know that, that it ended up like, like that at, at some point in the future. Uh, afterwards, of course, I was starting helping younger people because I'm also enrolled in the university position. So I was starting leading projects where other people were uh, trying to build something. So we were researching on different areas like Internet of Things. Now I'm into automotive. So trying to, starting from an intelligent shop, through the intelligent home, now the intelligent car. So mm -hmm. trying to make everything intelligent, like the Skynet of the future. <laughs> Are you also anticipating this new Terminator movie like I am or not? <laughs> they say Arnold is back as T-800, 70 years old, but <laughs> it would be good. OK, but now you uh, grew up. And okay. what is uh, your favorite part in your work now? What is the most impressing thing uh, why everybody have to work here. Need to work. Need here. to work here. Yeah. yeah. I think it's exactly that moment when you figure out that something that you were working hard on uh, starts to behave the way it is supposed to. So you created something, it works. You know, like it's alive. You know, from the Frankenstein movie. So it's it's kind of a that kind of a feeling. So when you finish a thing, when you when you get it up and running. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a feeling that uh, justifies all the months and months and months of work before that. So it's definitely a rewarding profession by itself mm -hmm. in that sense, regardless of all other perks that every profession has, like, okay, you, you have uh, enough money to live and whatever else, but uh, this is very specific to engineering. So you finish something, it works. It's not like a perpetual, like, work, like you're working behind a glass, uh, uh, booth like handing out papers to people or something like that is the same every 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 other day but here simply you try to make things mm -hmm. and when you make something and when you see it running uh, it, it's it's very rewarding it's also not rewarding when you fail to make something <laughs> that that runs correctly but yeah it's a, it's a caveat in 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 this profession so yeah but for example how people um, can use uh, something that you made mm. Yeah, uh, like consumer, consumer equipment, for example, if uh, somebody touches a button in his car and it basically uh, exercises a software application that you wrote for the car, yeah? mm -hmm. or if uh, somebody is presented with an alert to stay awake in the car when the sensors and your software detected uh, that he might be asleep or something like mm -hmm. this. So it's a direct utilization, so you kind of can 
save some, someone's life. Or if somebody toggles a switch and then uh, behind that, the whole system of Internet of Things uh, evolves and uh, the signals go uh, from uh, your device to the controller, to the server, then to Washington and back. Of course, you need to control your home lights through Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm because otherwise there's no way to turn up the light bulb <laughs> without going to, to the U.S. for the control. Um, of course, uh, I, I, I'm joking, but um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of uh, software today going behind the simple toggle of a switch or pressing a button or simply being there, <laughs> not doing anything specific, yeah. So so something is, is looking uh, at, at your uh, moves, at your... Uh, behavior, at your activities, and probably deciding what to do about it. Yeah, it's a bit scary, no? <laughs> um, nevertheless, it, it's, it's something that, that will be there, mm -hmm. specifically with this AI stuff, etc. So I think if uh, somebody is uh, thinking whether sh he, he should participate in the engineering profession of this kind, like the technology-wide profession, like consumer technologies, uh, it's better to be uh, in the driver driving seat, Nick, just but but to be on the other side. <laughs> so yeah, so at least some some bit of influence to how the technology will will work uh, is going to be retained mm -hmm. instead of being just there and hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. You can take an active role in defining the future. You look like you're very deep in love with your work, okay. but uh, <laughs> it's it's cool. <laughs> but what is uh, the most difficult thing? Okay, the most difficult thing about work uh, is definitely uh, and probably dealing with people like, like uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you need to work with somebody and there are a variety of people. So some soft skills like uh, how to deal with different types of people, how to interact in a working uh, community. It can be very fun, but some sometimes it can be really stressful because you tend to depend on somebody else's work and it's not possible to do things on our own anymore. So it's all teamwork, the result of a composed engagement. So you simply need to uh, have, have the works packed uh, correctly. And of course, human beings are er erroneous beings, so we make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. And we need to learn how to live with uh, the world where faults are, appear here and there. So uh, specifically, maybe, maybe a good message for engineering uh, students uh, most of them are, in my experience, perfectionists because, you know, you deal with maths, with numbers, everything sums up, mm -hmm. two and two is four, etc. But in, in, in real life, there's lot, lots of things that you cannot control and lots of things that can go wrong. And when such things happen, then you need to uh, stay calm and to try to figure out what to do, uh, how, to, how to fix the situation in the best way and not to raise the, the stress level, etc. Mm -hmm. Because these things are normal. Probably what you learn after, I don't know, 10 years in the industry is to deal with, with stress and to deal with uh, these unpredictable situations that can, can occur. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, in any field of life, not only in engineering. Mm -hmm. And what helps you to stay calm? squeezing my hands and uh, using these uh, sharpies for the for the board i usually whenever i'm uh, kind of uh, in in any kind of discussion usually i have a sharpie in my hand if nobody if nobody uh, <laughs> noticed that now i admit it uh, publicly so even even during the lectures I, I have these two like squeezing them all the time i don't know what uh, that, that that's kind of a very useful thing for students <laughs> <laughs> things no, but i think uh, now now for real uh, you just need to kind of uh, look at things with, with, with a normal, normal view, you know, you don't need to, you need to keep your anticipation a bit lower, you know, if you, if you really want something to happen, then you can really be disappointed if something doesn't go, go right. So be realistic, be motivated, of course, have a vision, but be realistic in, in, in what you do day to day. Mm -hmm. And then you simply can accommodate for, for some faults. Of course, some stress is inevitable, you cannot, but it, 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 you cannot avoid stress, but you want it not to be destruct destructive. Mm -hmm. It needs to be put under control. Okay, and last question. Trying to be realistic, but let's um, imagine uh, how do we see the consumer technologies in the future? Mm -hmm. That's a very broad question. Yeah, I would say that the consumer technology and the consumer, is there any difference? Yeah, mm -hmm. because everything starts to be kind of entangled and merged together. Um, I think we need to start really living uh, 
in a technology uh, landscape instead of living side by side. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you get my point, it, it's simply that uh, the technology is there to serve us, but technology is going to become us in a way. And even today it happens, uh, even though this mobile phone is not attached to you, it's your biological augmentation. So if you don't have, if your battery runs out, you cannot communicate anymore. You cannot remember anything anymore. Mm -hmm. You cannot get information from anywhere. Yeah, it's simply like like a part of you died off in a way. Yeah. So it's a it's a, it's a way how to look at that. It's a, it's not a it's an ex uh, people are looking for their natural extensions for many 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 years. Like a stick is the first extension. Mm -hmm. of, you, you have a stick and you you know your mm -hmm. my, my kid has a has a stick and tries to. Knock, knock things down from mm -hmm. table or something. Yeah, mobile, mobile phone is, is essentially um, an augmentation. So yeah, we, we need to, to, to start embracing that. And it makes technology very important because if the technology is not there, then uh, we cannot be ourselves anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to continue doing this because there are no way back, I'm afraid. There's no way for us to go back. <laughs> now it's... <laughs> Now the ship has sailed. <laughs> very positive ending. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so you need to be engineers. So no, no other choice. So it's. <laughs>